Dr. Foster saves a dying black girl named Tasha in the emergency room. Fifteen years later, something unexpected happens and the same girl knocks on his door. What revelation has brought Tasha back to Dr. Foster, and how will it change both their lives forever? Before we get into the story, comment below where in the world you are watching from today. And if you like this story, don't forget to subscribe. Benjamin Foster stood in his garden, the early morning sun casting long shadows across the neatly trimmed lawn. His weathered hands grasped a pair of pruning shears, methodically snipping away at the overgrown rose bushes. The repetitive motion was soothing, a balm for his troubled mind. At 63, Benjamin's once dark hair had faded to a distinguished silver. Deep lines etched his face, telling a story of both joy and sorrow. His blue eyes, once bright with passion for his work, now held a distant, haunted look. As he worked, Benjamin's thoughts drifted to the past. He remembered the bustling halls of the hospital where he had spent countless hours saving lives, the weight of the scalpel in his hand, the focused intensity of the operating room. These memories felt like they belonged to another lifetime. Melinda would have loved these roses, he murmured to himself, his voice barely above a whisper. The mention of his late wife's name sent a familiar pang through his chest. It had been five years since her passing, but the pain felt as fresh as ever. Benjamin set down the shears and sank onto a nearby bench, his shoulders slumping with the weight of his grief. He gazed at the empty house before him, its windows dark and uninviting. Once, it had been filled with warmth and laughter. Now it stood as a silent reminder of all he had lost. A gentle breeze rustled the leaves, carrying with it the sweet scent of blooming flowers. But even the beauty of his carefully tended garden couldn't lift the heaviness in Benjamin's heart. He had poured himself into this patch of earth, seeking solace in the simple act of nurturing life. Yet, the emptiness persisted. His neighbors rarely saw him these days. Benjamin had withdrawn from the world, declining invitations and avoiding social gatherings. The thought of small talk and pitying glances was more than he could bear. It was easier to stay hidden away, tending to his plants and reliving memories of happier times. As the sun climbed higher in the sky, Benjamin's mind wandered to the life he once led. He had been known as a miracle worker, his steady hands and keen mind saving countless lives. Patients and colleagues alike had praised his skill and dedication, but now those accolades felt hollow. What good is saving strangers, he thought bitterly, when I couldn't save the one person who mattered most? The guilt that had plagued him since Melinda's death resurfaced, threatening to overwhelm him. Benjamin stood, his joints protesting the movement. He shuffled back towards the house, leaving the half-pruned roses behind. Another day, perhaps, he would find the strength to finish the task. For now, the quiet solitude of his empty home beckoned. As he reached the back door, Benjamin paused, his hand on the doorknob. He glanced over his shoulder at the vibrant garden, a stark contrast to the gray emptiness he felt inside. For a brief moment, he wondered if he would ever find his way back to the man he once was, the skilled surgeon, the loving husband, the person who embraced life with open arms. But the moment passed and Benjamin stepped inside, closing the door firmly behind him. The house enveloped him in its familiar silence, a fitting companion to the loneliness that had become his constant companion. Fifteen years earlier, the emergency room at St. Mary's Hospital was a flurry of activity. The automatic doors burst open as paramedics rushed in with a small figure on a stretcher. Twelve-year-old Tasha lay motionless, her face swollen and her breathing labored. Please, someone help my baby. A frantic woman's voice cut through the chaos. Carla, Tasha's mother, ran alongside the stretcher, her eyes wild with fear. Dr. Benjamin Foster, then in his late forties, turned at the commotion. His keen eyes took in the scene in an instant. What do we have? He asked, his voice calm and authoritative. A paramedic rattled off the details. Twelve-year-old female, severe allergic reaction, unknown trigger, BP dropping airways closing fast. Benjamin nodded, his mind already racing through possible treatments. Get her into Bay 3, stat, he ordered, striding quickly beside the stretcher. As they transferred Tasha onto the hospital bed, Benjamin could see the severity of her condition. 
Angry red hives covered her skin, and her lips were turning an alarming shade of blue. The monitors beeped urgently, showing dangerously low oxygen levels. Ma'am, I need you to wait outside, a nurse gently urged Carla, who stood frozen in terror. But my baby... Carla's voice broke, tears streaming down her face. Benjamin met her gaze, his blue eyes steady and reassuring. We'll do everything we can, I promise. As Carla was led away, Benjamin turned his full attention to Tasha. Let's start with 0.3 megarian of epinephrine, he instructed the team. And get me an intubation kit, just in case. The nurse quickly administered the shot, but Tasha's condition didn't improve. Her chest heaved as she struggled for each breath. Benjamin's brow furrowed in concentration. Time was running out. Oxygen level still dropping, a nurse called out. Heart rate increasing. Benjamin made a split-second decision. We need to intubate now, he said, reaching for the laryngoscope. With practiced hands, he carefully inserted the breathing tube, providing Tasha's failing lungs with much-needed oxygen. The monitors slowly began to show improvement, but Benjamin knew they weren't out of the woods yet. Start a corticosteroid IV, he ordered, and let's get some antihistamines on board. As the team worked tirelessly around him, Benjamin kept a watchful eye on Tasha's vitals. Her swelling began to subside, and her oxygen levels steadily climbed. After what felt like hours but was merely minutes, the crisis began to pass. Benjamin let out a breath he didn't realize he'd been holding. He looked down at the small girl on the bed, her chest now rising and falling in a steady rhythm. The worst was over. As Benjamin watched Tasha's vitals slowly improve, he knew they weren't out of danger yet. The girl's face was still swollen, her skin mottled with angry hives. Her breathing, though assisted by the intubation, remained labored and uneven. We need to bring down the inflammation, Benjamin said, his voice steady despite the tension in the room. Let's start her on a higher dose of corticosteroids. A nurse quickly adjusted the IV and Benjamin leaned in close, watching for any sign of improvement. The minutes ticked by agonizingly slow, each beep of the heart monitor, a reminder of how precarious Tasha's condition remained. Suddenly, alarms blared as Tasha's blood pressure plummeted. Benjamin's heart raced, but his hands remained steady. She's going into anaphylactic shock, he announced. We need epinephrine now. As the nurse rushed to prepare the injection, Benjamin spoke softly to Tasha. Come on, little one, you can fight this. His words were barely audible over the chaos of the ER, but they carried the weight of his determination. The epinephrine was administered and the room fell into a tense silence. Benjamin held his breath, his eyes fixed on the monitors. For a moment, nothing changed. Then, slowly, Tasha's blood pressure began to rise. That's it. Benjamin murmured, a glimmer of hope in his eyes. Keep fighting, Tasha. Over the next hour, Benjamin and his team worked tirelessly. They adjusted medications, monitored vitals, and watched for any sign of improvement. Slowly but surely, Tasha's condition began to stabilize. The swelling in her face started to subside, and her breathing became more regular. The hives on her skin began to fade, replaced by a healthier pink tone. Benjamin allowed himself a small smile as he checked her vitals once more. I think we're past the worst of it, he announced to the team, relief evident in his voice. Let's keep her on the current treatment and monitor her closely. We're not out of the woods yet, but she's a fighter. As the immediate crisis passed, Benjamin stepped back, taking a deep breath. He looked at Tasha, her small form now peaceful on the hospital bed, and felt a wave of emotion wash over him. In that moment, he was reminded of why he became a doctor. To save lives. To make a difference. Dr. Foster, a nurse called softly. Tasha's mother is waiting outside. Should I let her know? Benjamin nodded, his eyes still on Tasha. Yes, tell her. Tell her that her daughter is going to be okay. As Benjamin stepped out of the ER, he found Carla pacing anxiously in the waiting area. Her eyes, red-rimmed from crying, locked onto him instantly. He approached her with measured steps, 
his face a mask of professional calm. Mrs. Wilson, he began, his voice steady. I'm pleased to inform you that Tasha is stable now. We've managed to control the allergic reaction, and she's responding well to treatment. Carla's hand flew to her mouth, a sob of relief escaping her. Oh, thank God, she whispered, her whole body sagging with relief. Can I see her? Benjamin nodded. In a few minutes, we're just making sure everything is in order. Suddenly, Carla reached out and grasped Benjamin's hands in hers. Her grip was tight, desperate. Dr. Foster, I can't thank you enough, she said, her voice thick with emotion. You saved my little girl. I don't know what I would have done if... She trailed off, overcome. Benjamin stood stiffly, uncomfortable with the physical contact and the raw emotion. He gently extracted his hands from Carla's grip. I was just doing my job, Mrs. Wilson. There's no need for thanks. But Carla wasn't deterred. Tears streaming down her face, she continued. No, you don't understand. Tasha is all I have in this world. You didn't just save her life, you saved mine too. I'll be forever grateful to you. Benjamin shifted uncomfortably, his gaze darting around the waiting room. He cleared his throat. I appreciate your gratitude, Mrs. Wilson, but really, it was a team effort. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to check on some other patients. As he turned to leave, Carla called out, Dr. Foster, please, is there anything I can do to repay you? Anything at all? Benjamin paused, his back to Carla. For a moment, something flickered across his face. A hint of pain, quickly masked. He half turned, his voice low and controlled. The best thing you can do is take good care of your daughter. Make sure she knows what she's allergic to and always carries an EpiPen. With that, he walked away, leaving Carla standing in the waiting room, her heart full of gratitude and her eyes following the doctor who had saved her world. Fifteen years had passed since that fateful night in the ER. Benjamin Foster sat on his porch, gazing out at the well-tended garden that had become his world. The roses bloomed in vibrant reds and pinks, their petals catching the morning light. But even their beauty couldn't chase away the emptiness that had settled deep in his heart. He sighed, running a weathered hand through his graying hair. At 62, Benjamin had thought he'd be surrounded by family, maybe grandchildren. Instead, he was alone, his days filled with the quiet routine of gardening and solitude. The stethoscope that once hung around his neck had been replaced by gardening gloves. The rush of the ER, the life and death decisions, the feeling of making a difference, all of it seemed like a distant dream now. Benjamin's fingers twitched, remembering the feel of a scalpel, the pressure of saving a life. But those days were gone. After Melinda's death, he couldn't bear to step foot in a hospital again. The pain of losing her, coupled with the guilt of not being able to save her, had been too much. So he'd walked away from it all, retreating into a world of silence and flowers. Benjamin stood up slowly, his joints protesting the movement. He made his way down the porch steps and into the garden. The soil was cool beneath his feet as he walked between the neat rows of vegetables. This was his life now. Planting, weeding, harvesting. It was simple, predictable, safe. But as he knelt to pull a stubborn weed, Benjamin felt the familiar ache in his chest. The sense of purpose that had once driven him. The passion for healing and helping others. It was all gone, replaced by a gnawing emptiness that no amount of gardening could fill. He looked up at the clear blue sky, remembering how Melinda used to love days like this. They would have picnics in the backyard, talking and laughing until the stars came out. Now, the vastness of the sky only emphasized how alone he was. The isolation weighed heavily on him, a constant companion in the quiet of his days. Benjamin had pushed away friends and colleagues after Melinda's death, unable to bear their sympathy or their attempts to draw him back into the world. Now, years later, he found himself truly alone. As he worked in the garden, Benjamin's mind drifted back to that night in the ER, to the little girl he had saved and her grateful mother and other patients he saved. He wondered briefly what had become of them, but quickly pushed the thought away. 
That was part of a life he had left behind, a life that now seemed to belong to someone else entirely. The steady patter of rain on the roof filled the quiet house. Benjamin sat in his favorite armchair, a worn book open on his lap. He wasn't really reading, just staring at the pages as the afternoon light faded. A sudden knock at the door startled him from his reverie. Benjamin frowned, not used to visitors. He set the book aside and slowly made his way to the entrance, his slippered feet shuffling across the hardwood floor. When he opened the door, Benjamin found himself face to face with a young woman. She stood under a bright yellow umbrella, a warm smile on her face. Her dark hair was pulled back in a neat ponytail, and her eyes sparkled with an energy that seemed to light up the gloomy day. Dr. Foster, she asked, her voice soft but confident. Benjamin nodded, confused. Yes, that's me. Can I help you? The young woman's smile grew wider. You already have, Dr. Foster. Fifteen years ago, to be exact. She extended her hand. I'm Tasha. You saved my life when I was twelve years old. Benjamin's eyes widened in recognition. Memories of that frantic night in the ER came flooding back. The little girl struggling to breathe, her panicked mother, the race against time. Tasha, he repeated, his voice barely above a whisper. I, I remember you. She nodded eagerly. I had a severe allergic reaction. You worked so hard to save me, and you did it, Dr. Foster. You gave me my life back. Benjamin stood there, stunned. He hadn't thought about that night in years, had pushed away all memories of his time as a surgeon. But now, looking at this vibrant young woman, it all came rushing back. Please come in, he said, stepping aside. You shouldn't be standing out in the rain. Tasha folded her umbrella and stepped inside. As Benjamin closed the door behind her, she turned to face him, her eyes shining with gratitude. I've wanted to thank you properly for so long, she said. Ever since that night, my allergy has been manageable. In fact, it's improved so much that I can live a normal life now. And it's all thanks to you, Dr. Foster. Benjamin felt a lump forming in his throat. He had forgotten this feeling, the knowledge that he had made a real difference in someone's life. It was overwhelming, almost painful in its intensity. I... I'm glad I could help he managed to say, his voice rough with emotion. But please, call me Benjamin. I'm not a doctor anymore. Tasha's smile faltered for a moment, but she quickly recovered. You'll always be an honorable doctor for me. I hope you don't mind me showing up like this. I just... I needed you to know how grateful I am. How grateful my mom and I both are. Tasha's eyes sparkled with excitement as she looked around Benjamin's living room. The old doctor shifted uncomfortably, not used to having company in his quiet home, Tasha said softly. I've been looking for you for years, Dr. Foster. I mean, Benjamin. Benjamin's brow furrowed. Years, but why? Tasha's smile was warm and genuine. Because I needed to thank you properly. What you did for me that night, it changed everything. She took a deep breath, her voice filled with emotion. After you saved me, I started to see life differently. I realized how precious every moment is, how important it is to make the most of the time we have. Benjamin listened, his face a mask of calm, but inside, he felt a stirring of something he hadn't experienced in a long time, a flicker of pride, quickly smothered by his usual detachment. That experience shaped my whole future, Tasha continued. I decided I wanted to help people, to inspire them the way you inspired me. So I became a motivational speaker. She laughed softly, a sound full of joy. Can you believe it? That scared little girl who could barely breathe is now standing on stages, telling her story to hundreds of people. Benjamin nodded slowly, unsure how to respond. That's quite an achievement, he said finally. Tasha's eyes shone with unshed tears. And it's all because of you, Dr. Foster. You gave me hope when I needed it most. You showed me that one person can make a real difference in someone's life. She reached out as if to touch his arm, but stopped short when she saw him stiffen. I've told your story so many times, she said softly, about the doctor who never gave up, who fought so hard to save a little girl he didn't even know. 
Benjamin felt a lump in his throat. He turned away, pretending to adjust a picture frame on the mantle. I was just doing my job, he said gruffly. Tasha shook her head. It was more than that. You cared. I could feel it, even as a child. That's why I had to find you, to let you know what a difference you made. Benjamin turned back to her, his face a mix of confusion and wariness. But why now? he asked. After all these years? Tasha's smile faltered for a moment. I've been searching for a long time, she admitted. You're not an easy man to find, Dr. Foster, but I never gave up. Just like you, never gave up on me. Tasha's smile faded and her eyes filled with worry. She took a deep breath, as if stealing herself for what she was about to say. Dr. Foster, there's another reason I've been searching for you, she said, her voice trembling slightly. It's my mom, Carla. She's... she's very sick. Benjamin's brow furrowed. He remembered Carla, the panicked mother from that night in the ER, so grateful when her daughter had been saved. I'm sorry to hear that, he said quietly. Tasha nodded, blinking back tears. It's a chronic illness. We've been to so many doctors, but none of them can figure out how to treat it effectively. She's getting worse, and I'm... I'm scared we're running out of time. Benjamin felt a familiar tightness in his chest. He knew where this was going, and he wasn't sure he was ready for it. Dr. Foster, Tasha said, her voice barely above a whisper. I know you're retired, but I believe you're the only one who can help her. You saved me when I was a little girl. I know you can save my mom, too. Benjamin turned away, his hands clenched at his sides. The weight of Tasha's request pressed down on him like a physical thing. He hadn't practiced medicine in years, hadn't even thought about it. The idea of returning to that world, of holding someone's life in his hands again. I... I don't know if I can, he said, his voice rough with emotion. It's been a long time. I'm not the same person I was back then. Tasha stepped closer, her eyes pleading. But you are, she insisted. You're still that brilliant doctor who never gave up. I know it's a lot to ask, but please, my mom needs you. Benjamin closed his eyes, memories washing over him. The thrill of saving a life, the crushing despair when he couldn't. The night he lost his wife, despite everything he knew, everything he tried. He'd walked away from medicine after that, unable to face the possibility of failing again. I understand if you're scared, Tasha said softly, but I've seen what you can do. You gave me a second chance at life. All I'm asking is that you try to do the same for my mom. Benjamin turned back to her, his face a mask of conflicting emotions. Part of him wanted to help, to feel that sense of purpose again. But another part, the part that had been hiding from the world for so long, was terrified of failing, of causing more pain. I... I need time to think about this, he said finally. It's not a decision I can make lightly. Tasha nodded, understanding in her eyes. Of course, she said. Take all the time you need. But please, Dr. Foster, Benjamin, don't say no just yet. My mom's life depends on this, on you. After a few days, Benjamin stood at the threshold of Carla's hospital room, his heart pounding. He took a deep breath stealing himself for what lay ahead. With a gentle nudge from Tasha, he stepped inside. The room was quiet, save for the soft beeping of machines. Carla lay in the bed, her once vibrant form now frail and pale. As Benjamin approached, her eyes fluttered open, and a weak smile spread across her face. Dr. Foster, she whispered, her voice barely audible. Is it really you? Benjamin nodded, his face a mask of professional detachment. Hello, Mrs. Wilson, he said, his tone measured and calm. Carla's eyes filled with tears. I can't believe you're here, she said, reaching out a trembling hand. After all these years, you saved my little girl, and now you've come to help me. Benjamin hesitated for a moment before taking her hand. The warmth of her gratitude washed over him, threatening to crack his carefully constructed walls. I... I'm just here to take a look, he said, 
his voice catching slightly. I can't promise anything. Carla nodded, her smile unwavering. I understand, she said. But just having you here, it gives me hope. I've been so scared, but now I feel like everything might be okay. Benjamin felt a lump forming in his throat. He turned away, busying himself with looking at Carla's chart, trying to maintain his professional distance. Tasha moved to her mother's side, taking her other hand. See, Mom? I told you Dr. Foster would come, she said, her voice full of emotion. Carla squeezed her daughter's hand. You did, sweetheart. You never gave up. Benjamin listened to their exchange, feeling like an outsider. The love between mother and daughter was palpable, reminding him of what he had lost. He focused on the medical facts before him, trying to push away the rising tide of emotions. Dr. Foster, Carla said, drawing his attention back to her, I know you're retired and I know this must be difficult for you, but I want you to know how much it means to me that you're here. You gave my daughter a chance at life, and now, now you're giving me hope too. Benjamin met her gaze, seeing the sincerity in her eyes. For a moment, he felt a flicker of his old passion for medicine, the desire to heal and help. But with it came the fear of failure, the memory of loss. I, I'll do what I can, he said, his voice uncertain. But I can't make any promises. It's been a long time since I've practiced and your condition is complex. Carla nodded, her smile never faltering. I understand, she said. But having you here, knowing you're willing to try... That means everything to me. Benjamin stood there, caught between the pull of his past and the safety of his isolated present. He knew he had to make a decision, but the weight of it felt overwhelming. Benjamin sat in the hospital's dimly lit consultation room, poring over Carla's medical records. The more he read, the deeper the furrow in his brow became. He rubbed his tired eyes, feeling the weight of responsibility settling on his shoulders. Tasha entered the room, her face etched with worry. Dr. Foster, how does it look? Benjamin looked up, his expression grave. Tasha, I'm afraid your mother's condition is more complex than I initially thought. The illness has been progressing rapidly and... He paused, choosing his words carefully. The experimental treatment I'm considering is risky. Tasha's eyes widened, a mix of fear and hope swirling in their depths. But you can help her, right? Just like you helped me all those years ago? Benjamin sighed, feeling the pull of her trust and the weight of his own doubts. Tasha, it's not that simple. Your case was different. This, this could go wrong in so many ways. Tasha moved closer, her voice trembling with emotion. Dr. Foster, please. You're our only hope. Mom's been fighting so hard, but she's getting weaker every day. I can't lose her. Tears welled up in her eyes. I believe in you. I know you can do this. Benjamin felt his resolve wavering. He looked at Tasha, seeing the same desperate hope he'd seen in her mother's eyes 15 years ago. Tasha, I understand how you feel, but you have to understand the risks. This treatment, it could make things worse. But it could also save her life, Tasha pleaded. Dr. Foster, I know you're afraid. I can see it in your eyes. But you saved me when everyone else had given up. Can't you do the same for my mom? Benjamin stood up pacing the small room. His mind raced with possibilities, both hopeful and terrifying. He thought of his wife, of all the patients he couldn't save, of the guilt that had driven him into isolation. But he also thought of Tasha, alive and thriving because of his efforts. After a long moment, he turned back to Tasha. All right he said softly. I'll try. But I need you to understand that there are no guarantees. This is going to be difficult and dangerous. Tasha's face lit up with relief and gratitude. She rushed forward, wrapping her arms around Benjamin in a tight hug. Thank you, Dr. Foster. Thank you so much. Benjamin stiffened at first, unused to such displays of emotion. But slowly, he felt something inside him begin to thaw, he awkwardly patted Tasha's back, feeling a mix of fear and determination. We'll start tomorrow. I'll just assist and connect with the doctors here in the hospital, he said, his voice firmer now. I'll need to run some more tests and prepare the treatment. 
It won't be easy, but we'll do everything we can for your mother. Tasha stepped back, wiping her eyes. I know you will, and we'll be here every step of the way. As Benjamin began Carla's treatment, he found himself spending more time with both her and Tasha. The sterile hospital room became a space filled with quiet conversations and shared hopes. Benjamin's hands moved with practiced precision as he adjusted Carla's IV, but his mind was increasingly occupied by the growing warmth he felt towards this small family. One afternoon, as Benjamin checked Carla's vitals, Tasha sat by her mother's bedside, her fingers intertwined with Carla's. She looked up at Benjamin, her eyes shining with gratitude. You know, Dr. Foster, Tasha said softly, I never got to tell you how much you changed my life. Benjamin paused, his hand hovering over Carla's chart. Oh? he asked, his voice carefully neutral. Tasha nodded, a small smile playing on her lips. After that night in the ER, I was able to live a normal life. No more constant fear of allergic reactions. I could go to sleepovers, try new foods, even travel. Benjamin listened, feeling a mix of pride and discomfort at her words. He wasn't used to hearing about the long-term impact of his work. I became a motivational speaker because of you, Tasha continued. I wanted to inspire hope in others, just like you did for me and mom that night. Carla squeezed her daughter's hand. It's true, she said, her voice weak but full of love. Tasha's been a beacon of hope for so many people, and it all started with you, Dr. Foster. Benjamin felt a lump form in his throat. He turned away, pretending to study the monitors. I... I'm glad you've done well, Tasha, he managed to say. As the days passed, Benjamin found himself looking forward to these moments with Tasha and Carla. Their warmth and gratitude began to chip away at the walls he'd built around his heart. He caught himself smiling more, lingering longer in conversation. But even as he felt this growing connection, Benjamin struggled with the pain of his past. Memories of his wife, of patients he couldn't save, haunted him. He'd catch himself starting to open up, only to retreat back into his professional demeanor. One evening, as Benjamin was leaving for the day, Tasha caught up with him in the hallway. Dr. Foster, she called out. I just wanted to thank you again, for everything. Benjamin turned, seeing the sincerity in her eyes. For a moment, he felt the urge to share something of himself, to let her see beyond the doctor's facade. But the old fear held him back. You're welcome, Tasha, he said, his voice kind but distant. I'm just doing my job. As he walked away, Benjamin felt the familiar ache of loneliness. He knew he was keeping Tasha and Carla at arm's length, but he couldn't bring himself to risk the pain of loss again. Not yet. Tasha's enthusiasm was infectious as she invited Benjamin to her upcoming motivational speaking event. Please come, Dr. Foster, she said, her eyes bright with hope. It would mean so much to me. Benjamin hesitated, his instinct to refuse battling with a newfound curiosity about this young woman whose life he had saved. I... I'm not sure, he stammered, his hands fidgeting with his stethoscope. Tasha's smile didn't waver. Just think about it, okay? It's this Saturday at 2 p.m. at the community center. As Saturday approached, Benjamin found himself torn. Part of him wanted to stay in the safety of his solitude, but another part, long dormant, urged him to go. In the end, that small spark of curiosity won out. The community center buzzed with energy as Benjamin slipped into the back of the auditorium. He felt out of place among the crowd of eager listeners, but he found a seat just as Tasha took the stage. She stood tall, her presence commanding yet warm. Good afternoon, everyone, Tasha began, her voice clear and strong. I'm here today to share a story with you. A story of survival, hope, and the power of second chances. As Tasha spoke, Benjamin found himself leaning forward, captivated. She described that fateful night in the ER, painting a vivid picture of her 12-year-old self struggling to breathe, her mother's panic and the calm, determined doctor who saved her life. That night changed everything for me, Tasha said, her eyes scanning the audience. It showed me how fragile life can be, but also how resilient we are. It taught me that every moment is precious, 
and that we have the power to make a difference in someone's life. Benjamin's chest tightened as he listened. He had never considered how his actions that night had rippled out, affecting not just Tasha's life, but the lives of countless others she had touched through her work. Tasha continued, her voice filled with passion. I stand here today because someone chose to act, to use their skills to save a life. And that's what I want to share with all of you. The power of your actions, no matter how small they might seem to change someone's world. For the first time in years, Benjamin felt a flicker of pride. It warmed him from the inside like a candle flame in a dark room. He saw himself reflected in Tasha's words, not the broken, isolated man he had become, but the doctor who had once believed in his ability to make a difference. As the audience applauded, Benjamin found himself on his feet with the rest of the crowd. Tasha's eyes found his in the back of the room, and she beamed, her smile radiant with gratitude and joy. In that moment, Benjamin felt a sense of purpose stirring within him. It was a feeling he had almost forgotten, buried beneath years of grief and self-doubt. But even as this warmth spread through him, his old fears and doubts clung on, whispering caution. After the event, Tasha insisted on treating Benjamin to dinner at a cozy Italian restaurant nearby. The warm glow of candlelight and the rich aroma of garlic and herbs filled the air as they entered. Benjamin hesitated at the threshold, feeling out of place in the lively atmosphere. Come on, Dr. Foster, Tasha said gently, placing a hand on his arm. I want you to meet some people. As they made their way to a large table in the corner, Benjamin noticed several faces turned towards them, eyes bright with curiosity. Tasha beamed as she introduced him. Everyone, I'd like you to meet Dr. Benjamin Foster, she announced her voice brimming with pride. He's the amazing surgeon who saved my life when I was 12 years old. A chorus of warm greetings and impressed murmurs swept around the table. Benjamin nodded awkwardly, unsure how to respond to the sudden attention. He felt a familiar urge to retreat, to shield himself from the emotions threatening to surface. As they settled into their seats, Tasha began to recount the story of her near-fatal allergic reaction and Benjamin's swift intervention. Her friends listened intently, their expressions a mix of awe and gratitude. After I recovered, Tasha continued, her eyes shining, I saw the world differently. I realized how precious life is and I wanted to make the most of the second chance Dr. Foster gave me. Benjamin listened, his heart heavy with conflicting emotions. Pride and warmth battled against the ever-present guilt that had been his constant companion since his wife's passing. He wanted to feel the joy of knowing he had made such a profound difference, but the weight of his failure to save the person he loved most held him back. Tasha went on to describe how she had channeled her gratitude into her motivational speaking career. I use my story to inspire others, she explained, to show them that no matter what challenges they face, there's always hope. As the evening progressed, Benjamin found himself drawn into conversations about Tasha's work and the lives she had touched. He listened as her colleagues shared stories of people who had been moved by Tasha's speeches, of individuals who had found the courage to pursue their dreams or overcome obstacles. With each anecdote, Benjamin felt a small crack forming in the walls he had built around his heart. The impact of his actions that night 15 years ago seemed to ripple out endlessly touching lives he had never even met. It was a stark contrast to the isolated existence he had been living, and it stirred something long dormant within him. Yet, even as he felt a glimmer of pride and purpose, the shadow of his past loss loomed large. The memory of his wife, of his inability to save her, pressed down on him like a physical weight. Benjamin struggled to reconcile the good he had done with the profound failure that had shaped his recent years. As the weeks passed, Carla's condition began to show signs of improvement. The experimental treatment Benjamin had carefully designed seemed to be working, bringing a newfound sense of hope to the family. Tasha's eyes sparkled with joy each time she visited her mother in the hospital, noticing the color returning to Carla's cheeks and the strength slowly coming back to her voice. One sunny afternoon, Benjamin stood at Carla's bedside, reviewing her latest test results. He felt a warmth spread through his chest as he realized the numbers were trending in the right direction. It was a feeling he hadn't experienced in years, 
the satisfaction of knowing he was making a real difference in someone's life. How's she doing, Dr. Foster? Tasha asked, her voice soft with hope as she entered the room. Benjamin turned to her, a small smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. She's improving, Tasha. The treatment seems to be working. Carla, propped up against her pillows, reached out and squeezed her daughter's hand. I feel stronger every day, sweetheart. Thanks to Dr. Foster here. Benjamin felt a lump form in his throat at Carla's words. He cleared it awkwardly, trying to maintain his professional demeanor. It's still early days, but the signs are promising. As the days went by, Benjamin found himself spending more time at the hospital, closely monitoring Carla's progress. He pored over medical journals late into the night, searching for any information that might help refine the treatment further. For the first time in years, he felt the familiar rush of determination and purpose that had once driven his career. Tasha often joined him during these long hours bringing coffee and sandwiches, insisting that he take breaks to eat and rest. Their conversations, once stilted and formal, began to flow more easily. They shared stories about their lives, their hopes, and their fears. One evening, as they sat in the quiet hospital cafeteria, Tasha opened up about her motivational speaking career. You know, Dr. Foster, every time I stand on that stage, I think about you, she said, her eyes shining with gratitude. Your actions that night gave me the chance to do this, to help others find hope in their darkest moments. Benjamin felt a warmth spread through his chest at her words. He realized that in helping Carla, he was not only saving a life, but also preserving the beautiful bond between mother and daughter. It was a stark reminder of the ripple effect a single act of kindness could have. As Carla's condition continued to improve, Benjamin found himself more deeply involved in her care. He adjusted medications, monitored her progress closely, and even spent time simply talking with her, learning about her life and her unwavering love for Tasha. The connection between Benjamin and Tasha grew stronger with each passing day. They worked together as a team, supporting Carla through her recovery. Tasha's unwavering optimism and Benjamin's medical expertise complemented each other perfectly, creating a powerful force of healing and hope. As the days turned into weeks, Carla's progress seemed steady and promising. Benjamin found himself smiling more often, a feeling of accomplishment warming his heart. Tasha's joy was contagious, her optimism filling the hospital room with a brightness that seemed to push away the shadows of illness. But on a gray Tuesday morning, everything changed. Benjamin arrived at the hospital earlier than usual, a nagging feeling of unease pulling him from his bed before dawn. As he approached Carla's room, he heard the frantic beeping of machines and saw nurses rushing in and out. His heart sank as he entered the room. Carla lay pale and still, her breathing labored and irregular. The monitors showed alarming numbers, each one a stark reminder of how quickly things could change. What happened? Benjamin demanded, his voice sharp with worry. A nurse turned to him, her face etched with concern. Her vitals started dropping rapidly about an hour ago, Dr. Foster. We've been trying to stabilize her, but... Benjamin pushed past her, immediately beginning to examine Carla. His mind raced as he checked her symptoms, a cold dread settling in his stomach. It was clear that Carla's body was rejecting the treatment, her condition deteriorating at an alarming rate. Just then, Tasha burst into the room, her eyes wide with fear. Dr. Foster, what's happening? Is mom okay? Benjamin turned to her, his face grave. Tasha, I... I'm sorry. Your mother's condition has taken a turn for the worse. Her body is rejecting the treatment. Tasha's face crumpled, tears welling up in her eyes. But... but she was doing so well. How could this happen? Benjamin felt a wave of guilt wash over him. He had let himself hope, let himself believe that he could make a difference. Now, faced with Carla's sudden decline, all his old fears and doubts came rushing back. I... I don't know, he admitted, his voice barely above a whisper. I thought we were making progress, but... Tasha moved to her mother's bedside, grasping Carla's hand tightly. Mom, please, she pleaded, her voice breaking. You have to fight. You can't give up now. As the doctors rushed to Carla's room, Benjamin watched the scene before him, feeling helpless and ashamed. 
he had failed them both. After all these years, after everything Tasha had believed about him, he couldn't save Carla. The weight of his failure pressed down on him, threatening to crush the small spark of hope that had begun to flicker in his heart. As the machines continued their ominous beeping, Benjamin retreated to a corner of the room. His mind raced, searching desperately for a solution, but all he could feel was the overwhelming sense of guilt and fear that had haunted him since his wife's death. He had opened himself up again, allowed himself to care, and now he was facing the same pain he had tried so hard to avoid. Benjamin closed his eyes, the sounds of Tasha's quiet sobs and the medical equipment blending into a cacophony of failure that echoed in his ears. Benjamin stood in the corner of the hospital room, his eyes fixed on the floor. The beeping of machines and Tasha's quiet sobs faded into a dull hum as he retreated into his thoughts. The weight of failure pressed down on him, suffocating any hope he had allowed himself to feel. I... I need some air, he muttered, barely audible. Without waiting for a response, he turned and walked out of the room, his footsteps echoing in the quiet hallway. Benjamin found himself in the hospital garden, a place he once found solace in during his years as a surgeon. Now it felt alien and cold. He sat on a bench, his head in his hands, as guilt and regret washed over him in waves. Same. I never should have come back, he whispered to himself. I should have stayed away. I can't do this anymore. Inside, Tasha wiped her tears and looked up, suddenly realizing Benjamin was gone. She glanced around the room, panic rising in her chest. Dr. Foster? She called out, her voice trembling. A nurse approached her gently. He stepped out for some air, dear, the nurse said softly. He seemed upset. Tasha's heart sank. She knew Benjamin was retreating, pulling away from them just when they needed him most. But she refused to let him go without a fight. With a deep breath, Tasha squeezed her mother's hand. I'll be right back, Mom. Stay strong for me, okay? She found Benjamin in the garden, hunched over on the bench. As she approached, she could see the defeat in his posture. Dr. Foster, she said gently, please don't give up on us. Benjamin looked up, his eyes filled with pain and regret. Tasha, I'm sorry. I thought I could help, but I was wrong. I've only made things worse. Tasha shook her head firmly. No, that's not true. You've given us hope. You've given my mom a fighting chance. A chance that's slipping away, Benjamin replied bitterly. I should never have gotten involved. I'm not the doctor I used to be. Tasha sat down next to him, her voice filled with determination. You are exactly the doctor we need. You saved me all those years ago, and I know you can save my mom now. We need you, Dr. Foster. Please don't walk away from us. Benjamin turned away, unable to meet her gaze. I can't bear to fail again, Tasha. I can't. But Tasha reached out, gently placing her hand on his arm. You haven't failed, Dr. Foster. The only way you'll fail is if you give up now. Please come back with me. My mom needs you. I need you. Tasha's words hung in the air between them, heavy with emotion and hope. Benjamin sat still, his eyes fixed on a distant point, but Tasha could see the conflict playing out on his face. Dr. Foster, she began again, her voice soft but firm. Do you remember that night in the ER? When I was brought in, barely breathing? Benjamin nodded slowly, the memory vivid in his mind. You didn't give up on me then, Tasha continued. Even when things looked bad, you kept fighting. You found a way to save me. She gently squeezed his arm, drawing his gaze to meet hers. That same courage, that same determination. We need it now. My mom needs it. Benjamin's eyes filled with tears. Tasha, I... I'm not that same man anymore. I've lost so much. You haven't lost your skill, Tasha insisted. You haven't lost your heart. It's still there, Dr. Foster. I can see it. She took a deep breath, her own eyes glistening. When you saved me, you gave me a chance at life. Now I'm asking you to do the same for my mom. Please, don't give up on her. Don't give up on yourself. Benjamin's shoulders sagged, the weight of Tasha's words sinking in. He looked at her, really looked at her, and saw the same fighting spirit he'd witnessed in that little girl all those years ago. 
I'm scared, he admitted quietly. What if I can't save her? Tasha nodded, understanding in her eyes. I'm scared too, but I believe in you, Dr. Foster, just like I did when I was 12 years old. She stood up, holding out her hand to him. Will you come back inside with me? Will you try one more time? Benjamin stared at her outstretched hand, his mind racing. The fear was still there, but something else was growing alongside it, a spark of the determination he thought he'd lost forever. Slowly, hesitantly, he reached out and took Tasha's hand. As he stood, he felt a small piece of his old self returning, the doctor who never gave up, who always found a way. Okay, he said softly. Let's go back. Let's see what we can do. Tasha's face lit up with hope, and as they walked back toward the hospital entrance, Benjamin felt a renewed sense of purpose. He wasn't sure what would happen next, but he knew he couldn't walk away. Not from Tasha, not from Carla, and not from the chance to make a difference once again. Benjamin stood at Carla's bedside, his brow furrowed in concentration as he pored over her medical charts. Tasha watched him anxiously, her hands clasped tightly together. The beeping of machines filled the room, a constant reminder of Carla's fragile condition. As Benjamin reviewed the data, something caught his eye. He paused, his finger tracing a line on the chart. Wait a minute, he murmured, more to himself than to Tasha. What is it? Tasha asked, hope creeping into her voice. Benjamin looked up, his eyes alight with a spark that had been missing for years. I think... I think I might have an idea. He explained to Tasha that a slight adjustment to her mother's treatment could potentially stabilize her condition. It's not without risk, he cautioned, but it might be our best chance. Tasha listened intently as Benjamin outlined his plan. He spoke of modifying the dosage and introducing a new combination of medications. His words were careful, measured, but there was an undercurrent of excitement that Tasha couldn't miss. What do you think? Benjamin asked when he finished explaining. I know it's a lot to take in, and there are no guarantees. Tasha took a deep breath, looking from Benjamin to her mother's pale face. Do you really think it could work? Benjamin nodded slowly. I believe it's our best option right now. But Tasha, you need to understand. This is still experimental. There are risks involved. Tasha reached out and took her mother's hand, squeezing it gently. She thought about all the times Carla had been there for her, all the sacrifices she'd made. Now it was Tasha's turn to be strong for her mother. She turned back to Benjamin, her eyes filled with determination. If you think this is the best chance we have, then I trust you, Dr. Foster. Let's do it. Benjamin felt a weight lift from his shoulders at Tasha's words. For the first time in years, he felt the familiar rush of purpose that had once driven him as a surgeon. He nodded, a small smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. All right then, he said, his voice steady and sure. We'll start the new treatment right away. As Benjamin began preparing the necessary changes, Tasha felt a flicker of hope ignite in her heart. She knew the road ahead would be challenging, but with Benjamin by their side, she believed they had a fighting chance. Tasha and Benjamin stood side by side at Carla's bedside as the nurse administered the modified treatment. The room was quiet except for the steady beep of the heart monitor and the soft hum of medical equipment. Tasha held her mother's hand, her eyes fixed on Carla's face, searching for any sign of change. Benjamin watched the IV drip, his mind racing with calculations and possibilities. He had done everything he could to give Carla the best chance, but now all they could do was wait. The weight of responsibility pressed heavily on his shoulders. As the minutes ticked by, Benjamin's thoughts drifted to the past. He remembered the day he lost his wife, Sarah. The memory was still sharp and painful, like a wound that had never fully healed. He saw her face, pale and drawn, as she lay in a hospital bed not unlike Carla's. Despite all his medical knowledge and skill, he hadn't been able to save her. The loss had shattered him. In the aftermath, Benjamin had built walls around his heart, brick by brick, determined to never feel that kind of pain again. He had retreated from the world, 
from his profession, from everything that reminded him of what he had lost. Now standing in this hospital room with Tasha and Carla, Benjamin felt those walls beginning to crumble. He glanced at Tasha, saw the hope and fear mingled in her eyes, and felt a twinge of something he hadn't experienced in years. Connection. He thought about how he had saved Tasha's life all those years ago, and how that single act had set in motion a chain of events that led him here. Despite his best efforts to remain detached, he found himself caring deeply about the outcome of Carla's treatment. As Benjamin wrestled with these conflicting emotions, Tasha's voice broke through his reverie. Dr. Foster, she said softly, thank you for being here, for trying. No matter what happens, it means everything to us. Her words pierced through the last of Benjamin's defenses. He realized that in trying to protect himself from pain, he had also cut himself off from the possibility of healing. Maybe, he thought, it was time to take down those walls. As the hours passed, Benjamin and Tasha kept a constant vigil at Carla's bedside. The tension in the room was palpable, both of them watching for any sign of change. Suddenly, Carla's fingers twitched and her eyelids fluttered. Mom? Tasha whispered, her voice trembling with hope. Benjamin leaned in, checking Carla's vitals. His eyes widened as he saw the numbers on the monitor. Her blood pressure is stabilizing, he said, his voice filled with cautious optimism. Tasha's eyes filled with tears. Does that mean... Benjamin nodded, a small smile tugging at the corners of his mouth. It's a good sign. The treatment seems to be working. Over the next few days, Carla's condition continued to improve. Color returned to her cheeks and her breathing became stronger and more regular. Tasha barely left her mother's side, her face glowing with relief and joy. One afternoon, as Benjamin was checking Carla's charts, he felt a weak squeeze on his hand. He looked down to see Carla's eyes open, looking at him with gratitude. Thank you, she whispered, her voice hoarse but clear. Benjamin felt a warmth spread through his chest a feeling he hadn't experienced in years. He patted Carla's hand gently. You're welcome, he said softly. Tasha, who had been dozing in a chair nearby, woke up and saw her mother awake. She rushed to the bedside, tears streaming down her face. Mom, oh mom, you're okay. As Benjamin watched the emotional reunion between mother and daughter, he felt something shift inside him. The walls he had built around his heart began to crumble even further. He realized that he wasn't just treating an illness, he was healing a family. More than that, he was beginning to heal himself. The joy on Tasha's face, the gratitude in Carla's eyes. It all reminded him of why he had become a doctor in the first place. To help people. To make a difference. For the first time in years, Benjamin felt a sense of purpose. He had forgotten how it felt to be truly needed to use his skills to bring hope and healing. As he watched Tasha and Carla embrace, he felt a small smile form on his lips. Tasha looked up at him, her eyes shining with tears of happiness. Dr. Foster, I don't know how to thank you. You've saved our family twice now. Benjamin felt a lump form in his throat. He hadn't realized how much he had missed this feeling of connection, of being part of something larger than himself. I'm just glad I could help, he said softly. As the days passed and Carla continued to improve, Benjamin found himself spending more time at the hospital, not just as a doctor, but as a friend to both Carla and Tasha. One evening, as Carla rested peacefully, Benjamin and Tasha sat in the quiet hospital cafeteria sipping coffee. Tasha looked at Benjamin, her eyes filled with gratitude. Dr. Foster, I can't thank you enough for everything you've done for us. Benjamin nodded, a small smile on his face, but as he looked at Tasha, something in her expression made him pause. For the first time in years, he felt a desire to open up, to share the burden he'd been carrying for so long. Tasha, he began, his voice barely above a whisper, there's something I need to tell you. Tasha leaned in, her face filled with concern. What is it, Dr. Foster? Benjamin took a deep breath. Fifteen years ago, when I treated you, I was at the top of my game, but shortly after, my wife. She fell ill. Tasha's eyes widened, but she remained silent, letting Benjamin continue. I tried everything, he said, his voice cracking. 
every treatment, every experimental drug. But in the end, I couldn't save her. I, who had saved so many lives, couldn't save the one that mattered most to me. Tears welled up in Benjamin's eyes, and he didn't try to hide them. After she passed, I couldn't bear to practice medicine anymore. Every patient reminded me of my failure, so I retreated from medicine, from life itself. Tasha reached out and placed her hand on Benjamin's. I'm so sorry, she said softly. I had no idea. Benjamin looked at her, his eyes filled with a mixture of pain and gratitude. You coming back into my life, it, it stirred something in me, something I thought was long dead. Tasha squeezed his hand gently. Dr. Foster, your actions gave me life and purpose. You may not have been able to save your wife, but you saved me. And now you've saved my mother too. Benjamin felt a weight lift from his shoulders as Tasha spoke. Her words, filled with empathy and understanding, began to chip away at the walls he'd built around his heart. Your loss doesn't define you, Tasha continued. What defines you is the lives you've touched, the hope you've given. You gave me a second chance at life, and I've tried to make the most of it every day. As Benjamin listened to Tasha, he felt something shift inside him. The guilt and grief that had consumed him for so long began to loosen their grip. He realized that by retreating from life, he had been dishonoring his wife's memory rather than preserving it. Thank you, Tasha, he said, his voice thick with emotion. I think I needed to hear that more than I knew. As the days turned into weeks, Carla's recovery progressed steadily. Benjamin found himself visiting the hospital more frequently, not just as a doctor checking on his patient, but as a friend genuinely concerned for Carla's well-being. The sterile hospital room that once felt cold and impersonal now buzzed with warmth and laughter during his visits. One afternoon, as Benjamin entered Carla's room, he was greeted by the sight of Tasha, helping her mother with some gentle exercises. Carla's face, once pale and drawn, now had a healthy glow. She smiled brightly when she saw Benjamin. Dr. Foster, Carla exclaimed. We were just talking about you. Benjamin felt a warmth spread through his chest. All good things, I hope, he said with a chuckle. Tasha grinned. Of course, we were actually wondering if you'd like to come to my next speaking event. It's this weekend, and it would mean so much to have you there. Benjamin hesitated for a moment, old habits of isolation trying to reassert themselves. But as he looked at the hopeful faces of Carla and Tasha, he found himself nodding. I'd be honored, he said softly. That weekend, Benjamin found himself sitting in the front row of a packed auditorium. Tasha took the stage, her presence commanding and warm. As she began to speak, Benjamin was struck by the power of her words and the impact of her story. Life can change in an instant, Tasha said, her voice carrying through the room. For me, that instant was a severe allergic reaction when I was 12 years old. But it was also the moment I met a doctor who would change my life forever. Benjamin felt a lump form in his throat as Tasha recounted the night he had saved her life. He listened, amazed, as she wove that experience into a message of hope and resilience. As the event concluded, Benjamin was approached by several audience members. Their eyes shone with tears and gratitude as they shared how Tasha's story had touched them. One woman, her voice trembling, told Benjamin how hearing about his role in Tasha's life had inspired her to pursue a career in medicine. For the first time in years, Benjamin felt a sense of purpose that extended beyond his own pain. He realized that his actions, both past and present, had rippled out to touch lives he had never even met. As he drove home that evening, Benjamin felt a shift within himself. The weight of grief and isolation that had burdened him for so long began to lift. In its place, a renewed sense of belonging and purpose took root, nurtured by the love and gratitude of Tasha and Carla, and the inspiration he found in the lives he had touched. Next evening, Benjamin sat in his favorite armchair, a steaming cup of tea on the side table beside him. The evening light filtered through the curtains, casting a warm glow across the room. He closed his eyes and took a deep breath, marveling at the sense of peace that had settled over him in recent weeks. 
As he sipped his tea, Benjamin's thoughts drifted to Tasha and Carla. A small smile tugged at the corners of his mouth, a gesture that had once felt foreign, but now came naturally. He realized how much his life had changed since they had re-entered it, bringing with them a whirlwind of emotions and experiences he had long forgotten. Benjamin thought back to the day Tasha had appeared on his doorstep, how guarded and hesitant he had been. Now, he couldn't imagine his life without her infectious optimism and unwavering faith in him. And Carla, her strength and gratitude had touched something deep within him, awakening feelings he thought had died along with his wife. He set down his cup, his hands trembling slightly as the weight of his realization hit him. By saving Tasha and Carla, he had inadvertently saved a part of himself, a part he thought was lost forever. The emotional barriers he had carefully constructed over the years had begun to crumble, allowing joy and connection to seep through the cracks. Benjamin stood up and walked to the window gazing out at his garden. The flowers that once seemed like mere distractions now bloomed with vibrant purpose, mirroring the new life that had blossomed within him. He remembered how he used to tend to them mechanically, going through the motions without truly seeing their beauty. Now, each petal and leaf held a promise of renewal and growth. As he stood there, Benjamin felt a warmth spreading through his chest. It was a feeling he had almost forgotten, the simple joy of being alive and connected to others. He thought of the way Tasha's eyes lit up when she spoke about her motivational work, and how Carla's gentle touch on his arm made him feel truly seen for the first time in years. Tears welled up in Benjamin's eyes, but they weren't tears of sorrow or regret. They were tears of gratitude and hope. He realized that by opening his heart to Tasha and Carla, he had allowed himself to feel again, to experience the full spectrum of human emotion that he had shut out for so long. As the weeks passed, Carla's health continued to improve steadily. The modified treatment Benjamin had devised worked wonders, and soon she was well enough to leave the hospital. The day of her discharge was filled with joy and tears of happiness. Benjamin stood by Tasha's side as Carla took her first steps out of the hospital, her face beaming with newfound strength. The sunlight seemed brighter, the air fresher, as if the world itself was celebrating Carla's recovery. I can't believe this day is finally here, Tasha said, her voice thick with emotion. She squeezed Benjamin's hand, a gesture that now felt natural and comforting to him. Neither can I, Benjamin replied softly, his eyes glistening. A few days later, the family gathered for a small celebration at Tasha's home. The living room was decorated with colorful balloons and a banner that read, Welcome Home, Mom. Laughter filled the air as Carla, Tasha, and Benjamin shared stories and enjoyed each other's company. As they sat around the dinner table, Carla raised her glass. To Benjamin, she said, her voice strong and clear. Without you, I wouldn't be here today. You've given me a second chance at life just like you did for Tasha all those years ago. Benjamin felt a lump in his throat. I'm just grateful I could help, he said humbly. Tasha smiled at him. You've done more than help, Benjamin. You've become part of our family. The next week, Tasha invited Benjamin to another one of her motivational speaking events. This time, however, she had a surprise in store for him. As Benjamin took his seat in the audience, he noticed an extra chair on the stage. Tasha began her speech, her voice filled with passion and purpose. Today I want to share a story of hope, perseverance, and the power of second chances, she said. And I want to introduce you to the man who made it all possible. Benjamin's heart raced as Tasha recounted the story of her childhood allergic reaction and her mother's recent illness. Then, she turned to the audience with a bright smile. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome Dr. Benjamin Foster, the man who saved both my life and my mother's. The audience erupted in applause as Benjamin, stunned and deeply moved, made his way to the stage. Tasha embraced him warmly, and as he faced the crowd, he saw Carla in the front row, her eyes brimming with tears of joy. If you enjoyed the story of Dr. Foster and Tasha, I handpicked this next story that will touch your heart. Please don't miss this one. Click here to watch it.